Scientists find first evidence that groups of apes cooperate. Some bonobos are challenging the notion that humans are the only primates capable of group-to-group -group alliances. If a troop of baboons encounters another troop on the savanna, they may keep a respectful distance or they may get into a fight, but human groups often do something else, they cooperate. Tribes of hunter-gatherers regularly come together for communal hunts or to form large-scale alliances. Villages and towns give rise to nations. Networks of trade span the planet. Human cooperation is so striking that anthropologists have long considered it a hallmark of our species. They have speculated that it emerged thanks to the evolution of our powerful brains which enable us to use language, establish cultural traditions and perform other complex behaviors. But a new study, published in Science on Thursday, throws that uniqueness into doubt. It turns out that two groups of apes in Africa have regularly mingled and cooperated with each other for years to have extended, friendly, cooperative relationships between members of other groups who have no kinship ties is really quite extraordinary said Joan Silk, a primatologist at Arizona State University who was not involved in the study. The new research comes from long-term observations of bonobos, an ape species that lives in the forests of the Democratic Republic of Congo. A century ago, primatologists thought bonobos were a slender subspecies of chimpanzee, but the two species are genetically distinct and behave in some remarkably different ways. Among chimpanzees, males hold a dominant place in society. They can be extremely violent, even killing babies. In bonobo groups, however, females dominate and males have never been observed to commit infanticide. Bonobos often diffuse conflict with sex, a strategy that primatologists have not observed among chimpanzees. Scientists made most of their early observations of bonobos in zoos, but in recent years they've conducted long-term studies of the apes in the wild. Martin Serbeck, a behavioral ecologist at Harvard, in 2016 set up a new observational site in the Kokolapori Bonobo Reserve in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Working with the Mongandu people who live in neighboring villages, he set out on hikes through the forests in search of bonobos. On their first scouting trip, Dr. Serbeck was shocked to see what happened when the bonobo group they were following encountered another one. After some excited hooting, the apes settled down into a friendly gathering. The encounter couldn't have been more different than what happens between chimpanzee groups. Male chimpanzees typically patrol the boundaries of their ranges, ready to battle males from other groups. They will even climb hilltops to scan the horizon for other groups. I just felt very privileged to witness this encounter, Dr. Serbeck recalled. After that, Dr. Serbeck and his colleagues came to know the two groups of bonobos very well. They called one group, with 11 adults, Ekalakala. The other group, with 20 adults, came to be known as Coco Alongo. He and his colleagues observed 95 encounters between the two groups over the course of two years. Some lasted less than an hour, but others lasted days. Once, the Ekalakala and Coco Alongo groups lingered for two weeks before parting ways. During these mixers, the bonobos behaved much as they would in a single group. They groomed one another, shared food and cooperated to chase away snakes. Yet the two groups remained distinct. The scientists found no evidence of any offspring from Ekalakala and Coco Alongo apes. The two groups even maintained their own cultures. Although their ranges overlapped, they hunted for different kinds of game. Ekalakala bonobos went after small deer-like mammals called dukers. Coco Alongo bonobos caught squirrels. Liran Samuni, an expert on chimpanzees at the German Primate Center in Jitin and who joined the Kokolapori research, said that the cooperation between the groups was not just the result of bonobos being friendly in general. It's not just random, she said. Dr. Samuni and her colleagues found that individual apes from the different groups gradually formed bonds as they offered favors and gifts back and forth. In some cases, two apes from the different groups even formed an alliance to harass a third bonobo. Dr. 
Silk hoped that the new research would encourage similar studies elsewhere to see just how widespread this cooperation really is among bonobos. You always want to see things happening over and over in different populations before you are really convinced of how important this feature is, she said. Those observations may not come anytime soon. It's hard to establish bonobo research sites and not only because the apes live deep in rainforests. Scientists also have to contend with the internal conflicts in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And bonobos, which may number only 15,000 individuals, are threatened by logging and poaching. Dr. Samuni noted that chimpanzees, with their hostile encounters, are just as closely related to us as bonobos are. Our species resembles both lineages in different respects. While human groups can cooperate in remarkable ways, they can also organize themselves to fight. I wouldn't say it's either or dr. Samuni said. They are jointly teaching us about our past. We present evidence that people in small-scale mobile hunter-gatherer societies cooperated in large numbers to produce collective goods. Forgers engaged in large-scale communal hunts and constructed shared capital facilities. They made shared investments in improving the local environment. And they participated in warfare, formed enduring alliances, and established trading networks. Large-scale collective action often played a crucial role in subsistence. The provision of public goods involved the cooperation of many individuals, so each person made only a small contribution. This evidence suggests that large-scale cooperation occurred in the Pleistocene societies that encompass most of human evolutionary history, and therefore it is unlikely that large-scale cooperation in Holocene food-producing societies results from an evolved psychology shaped only in small group interactions. Instead, large-scale human cooperation needs to be explained as an adaptation, likely rooted in distinctive features of human biology, grammatical language, language, increased cognitive ability, and cumulative cultural adaptation. Humans are very good at cooperating with others outside of our family, kin, and cultural groups. Although cooperation among individuals within groups is also common in other animals, doing so outside of such groups has rarely been observed. Samuni and Serbeck looked at cooperative behaviors such as grooming and food sharing in bonobos and found that individuals that cooperated more within their own group were also more likely to cooperate with those in other groups. See the perspective by Silk. Furthermore, such cooperation was neither rare nor opportunistic. Social openness in one of our closest relatives suggests that our cooperativeness may be older than we thought. Sacha Vigneri. The selective advantage of male infanticide is enhancement of reproductive success of the aggressor. This implies that aggression is directed at individuals sired by others, infant loss shortens the mother's interbirth interval, and the aggressor has a greater likelihood of siring the next offspring of the victim's mother. As these conditions are not always met, the occurrence of male infanticide is expected to vary, and hominoid primates offer an interesting example of variation in male infanticide. Infanticide has been reported in gorillas and chimpanzees but appears to be absent in orangutans and bonobos. One argument for the absence of infanticide in bonobos is reduction of male aggression. However, given that male aggression against immature individuals occurs and that females engage in behavior that is considered to be counter-strategy against male infanticide, the risk of male infanticide may pose a potential threat. Here, we explored whether aggression by male bonobos fits predictions of male infanticide. Male aggression toward immature individuals was rare and did not have lethal consequences, but the majority of observed cases exposed targets to risks of injury. Males did not target their own offspring less frequently than unrelated immatures, and the risk of being the target of male aggression increased with the target's age. Overall, these results do not match the predictions of the adaptive male infanticide hypothesis. Instead, aggression by males may promote the emigration of the targets and older males may reinforce their superior status toward individuals that will soon compete for the same resources. Militia in Congo kills dozens at camp for internally displaced. The attack was attributed to a group that the United Nations says has killed hundreds of civilians in the region and forced thousands to flee.
Beni, Democratic Republic of Congo, more than 40 civilians were killed on Monday when a militia attacked a camp for displaced people in the eastern part of the Democratic Republic of Congo, a local official and the head of a civil society group said. Jean Richard Lenga, chief of the Bahima Bajir district in Itari province, said members of the Cooperative for the Development of the Congo, or Codeco, massacred 46 people with knives and firearms and burned others in their homes in the middle of the camp. The group claims to defend the interests of farmers from the Lendu ethnic group, who have long been in conflict with Hima herders and its fighters have killed hundreds of civilians in Itari and forced thousands to flee their homes, according to the United Nations. The whole village is in mourning now, it's too sad Mr. Lenga said, adding that the authorities were still Sirk.